Uh, Miss Holland, tell me about Ashlyn. She is placed with Morgan Jackson. And is doing well. Um, she's going to school. And um, she has a 504 plan that helps her with um, reading and math. Um, has her accommodations to help her with that. Um, okay, any sort of medical concerns with Ashley? Not at this time. Okay, uh, I think in February we talked about some dental work that was needed. Is all of that done and behind us? Yes, ma'am. Okay, all healed up and, and no concerns there? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Great. All right, do we have any home studies pending? Any relatives that we're looking at? Not at this time. Okay. Uh, Ms. Hudman, concerns with Ashley? Uh, no, Your Honor, I don't. Um, not, not for the most part. She's uh, adjusting well. She's doing well. Um, she's opening up more, less closed off. Um, and so um, I, I do know that yesterday she had a psychological evaluation through Stonebridge and so um you know I don't obviously I don't have any results on that yet I just know that that was to occur yesterday um and so hopefully you know in the next couple of weeks we'll be able to get that in case she needs any um any more targeted therapy or anything like that um my understanding is that she's catching up in reading and and has a good teacher in math Math is hard because it's so foundational and builds on the previous year, but she's a sharp kid and, and is doing the work and doing what she's supposed to do. Popular with uh, the little girls in the neighborhood. And so I'm, I'm happy about that. She does get visits with the parents in person with dad and telephone with mom and um while it sometimes makes her sad, I don't think sad in a, in a, just sad in a, you know, she misses her family way, not necessarily sad in a, uh, you know, you know, abusive type situation. I don't think that's the case at all. I just think, you know, she does, uh, she does, she does, misses her parents. All right. Can we unmute the courtroom? Yes, there we go. Ms. Gonzalez? Yes, ma'am. Uh, I'm sorry, we, we started the hearing and we've been talking about Ashlyn, but do you have any concerns about Ashlyn? I'm just, um, I haven't heard from her lately. Um, just her educational wise and how her health is and um, when she's going to be returning home. Okay. Mr. Mitchell, do we have parents served? Your Honor, we have, uh, excuse me, one parent has been served as the mother. There were several attempts. I think she was finally served on the, the 13th of March is what I show. Uh, there's no service at this time that I'm aware of that's been shown on um, the fathers. There's been a number of attempts made on Armando Mojica, but no service has been achieved. Okay. Uh, Ms. Morrison, any concern on behalf of Mr. Mojica regarding the child? N not to my knowledge, Judge. Okay. Um, Ms. Holland, you said that, or some, I think Ms. Hudman actually said that the, the father is visiting regularly? Visits are scheduled, Judge. He has a hard time remembering when they are. St. Francis has um, done... Oh lots of attempts to um, provide transportation. Um, Chelsea even went and retrieved a phone out of property and is trying to get that to Mr. Mojica so we can set up some reminders, but um, visitation is scheduled for him, but we're having trouble um, actually having that visitation occur. And the mom has set up phone contact. And so if, if she needs more money on her books or if that's not happening, I, I, I just need to know that. 
Um, I'm sorry. I, I did get him a planner and he said he would use it. Um, I have not gotten to get it to him yet. Um, just a matter of getting it to him so he can remember to go to those visits. Um, okay. And I will be putting those in there so he can remember. Okay, let's talk about all the services. Let's start with dad. What, what are we asking dad to do in this case in order to get Ashlyn back in his home? Um, we would like him to um, allow plan and allow work myself to access his residence on a monthly basis, maintain stable housing, maintain stable employment, um, participate in supervised visitation with his ch child, participate in a psychological evaluation and follow all recommendation in therapy and follow, follow all recommendations, participate in 12 hours in parenting classes, participate in a drug and alcohol assessment if he is a test positive on a drug screen, participate in, participate in random drug screens as requested and refrain from a criminal lifestyle. Ms. Morrison. No, Your Honor, I, I do not agree with the plan of service. Um, my specific objections are um, this man already received Social Security retirement. Um, he should not be forced to obtain a job. He also has a condition that um, would make it difficult for him to keep a job, job long term. Um, also, I don't under the focus of, of the plan of service is all wrong. Um, they've done a, a regular plan of service for a regular parent when particularly Mr. Mojica needs some sort of occupational therapy or some something else that can allow him to remember and keep up with things if Teresa or the daughter's not there to remind him. And so I don't know if we need to like speak to APS to see if they have different therapists or if they have different um, things available to him. But at this point in time, individual therapy is not going to be fruitful. I'm not even sure parenting is going to be fruitful until we can figure out um, some more op occupational type services for him. Yes, ma'am, we will definitely look into that. Um, and I, I, Ms. Holland, yes, I, com I completely agree. And I think that maybe we need to do some research on in the APS, uh, I heard a lot of testimony throughout the adversary hearing of this case and knew that a regular plan of service was not going to be appropriate uh, for these parents. So I would encourage the parties to get together, uh, hopefully sometimes this week, or or maybe you and Miss Weatherford could do some research um, and get Miss Morgerson to help you uh, because what came out of the adversary hearing is very obvious that this man needs much different services uh, in this case. So we need to tailor the plan of service uh, a whole lot more better than, um, than that. So I'm gonna reset this hearing to uh, April the 18th. We're gonna do this one again next week. I think yes, while we're here, let's talk about Ms. Gonzalez's plan of service. I have her services as um, uh, allow myself to access her residence on a monthly basis, maintain stable housing, stable employment, participate in supervised and unsupervised um, supervised visitation with her child, psychologically eval and follow all, all recommendations, participate in a women's independent now group and follow all recommendations. Participate in a ther in therapy with Mr. Richard Gatlin. Twelve hours of parenting classes, drug and alcohol assessment, random drug screens as requested, and refrain from a criminal lifestyle. Okay, Ms. Morrison, what about that plan? Um, I don't understand the request for the now the women's. Um, independence class. Uh, my client's very independent. She's always worked separate and apart from the home. And so um, I don't agree with that. But I think the, the rest of the plan of service, considering it, its focus on 
her more therapy. I think that would be that would be fine once she's released. I don't know how many of these services are offered in the Lubbock County Jail. I know that's changed a little bit recently, so I'll just have to look at that and see. I I would agree based on the testimony that I heard at the adversary hearing that I don't think is when is necessary if Mr. Gatlin um, does some therapy with her and thinks that there are some issues that she could benefit um, from with respect to those women's independence issues, then he can take care of those in therapy. But I don't think a full blown win class is necessary for Ms. Gonzalez. Yes, ma'am. And, and then I, I'm sure this is true, but I just want to say this also for the benefit of my client because she's in there. I know like she can do counseling and some parenting classes um, there while she's incarcerated and those will count, correct? Yes. Okay. Okay, Ms. Gonzalez, tell me what is available in the pod that you were in. Do you have AA and NA and or spiritual classes? What what do you have available there? They have the AA classes, but you have to sign up for them. And I don't know what days they um, attend those classes, but there that is available. And then there's like church um, sessions that you go to. And um, I'm not really familiar with all of all of it because I don't attend to them because you have to sign up for them. And I don't know exactly what. Uh, AA classes are and the other classes that they provide. I really don't know what. I would encourage you to figure out whatever is available to you that you can sign up for and get started on it right away. The, the more that you do while you're incarcerated, um, the better start that you get when you get out. Okay. Anything else? So I'll approve the, the mother's plan of service with that one change. But what, with respect to the father, I'm going to reset his part of the hearing to next week. Um, I think that we've taken care of the mom, so we will not bring her back next week. But as far as Mr. Mojica's plan of service, let's do some more research to see what would be appropriate for Mr. Mojica and his um, special needs, really. Yes, ma'am. That we heard a lot about during the adversary hearing. Okay. Uh, I'll see everybody back. Or Judge, um, before you adjourn on this hearing, um, regarding visits between mom and um, the child, I, I did want to address something um, in case mom's not here next week. Okay. Um, uh, it it's it's a bit alarming because the um, during the phone calls, um, which the child looks forward to, absolutely. But there are a lot of promises made as to when she's getting out and when the kids are coming, when the child is coming home. And I think that that is just setting up for a lot of disappointment since we don't know the answer to either one of those questions. And I would just ask that, um, you know, while we, we hope she, uh, she is released soon and we hope this child is reunified soon, um, giving a, a specific date like today. Um, the child thinks that mom is getting out today and going home today. Um, and that is, that's a lot on this little girl. Judge, if I can add to that, um, some of those promises are also being made by Mr. Mojica. Um, and we just kind of want that to be addressed too. I know I talked to Chelsea about it and yeah, he's kind of doing the same thing and we just don't want to, she's been. Okay. Well, this is the first it's been brought to me. And if those concerns will be shared with me, I will address those with my client. Absolutely. And again, it's the first I've heard of it. So. Tessa, any other concerns regarding Ashlyn? No, I just want to echo what Sarah said. Um, she's doing great in her foster home in that um, she has opened up a lot more and you're able to see her personality and she does look forward to her parents' visits. All right, Ms. Morgison, I'll give you a chance to visit with your clients about those concerns regarding the visits. Uh, if that concern continues, then we'll put the visits in sort of a supervised setting and right. let either Ms. Weatherford or Ms. Holland monitor those and shut them down if anything inappropriate gets said. Okay. But we'll, we'll let you visit with your clients about uh, those inappropriate statements and see if we can fix the problem that way first. Okay. Could you put me in a room since she's here? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, but we will see everybody back on this case with respect to the dad in his plan of service okay. um, next Tuesday. Mr. Mitchell, what is the status of service on Ms. Black? 
I uh, show that she was served your honor on February 28th of this year. Okay, and what about Mr. De La Cruz? I do not show that he's been served. There's been a number of attempts made, all unsuccessful at this time. And what about Mr. Boucher? Same thing with Mr. Boucher, Your Honor. No service has been affected yet. Okay. Uh, Ms. Holland, tell me about the children. Where are they currently placed? The children are currently placed with their maternal grandmother, Deanne Jones. Um, they're doing very okay. well in placement. Um, Grace is currently going to classes every day, and enjoying them as much as a teenager can. Um, Landon is going to classes. Um, he's having not trouble in classes, but trouble with peers. He's doing well overall. And Colton is doing well. Um, it's going, has a neurologist appointment today. Um, he had an EEG last week um, to see to the seizure thing. Um, and hopefully get his medication refilled. We've been working on that since the beginning of this case. And I've been fighting with insurance since the beginning of this case, trying to get it refilled, trying to get it transferred over. Um, and they would not transfer the Divalprox ER, 250 milligrams, um, without a new, new prescription from the doctor. So um, we've been waiting on an appointment from the neurologist with the neurologist, and he has that today. Okay. Is he still having seizures? They've not been reported to me. Yes. Mom says he is. Uh, our video chat the last time he had a uh, six during her call. Okay, hopefully today the neuro, uh, the neurologist will get Can some I medicine for him in place. I was gonna ask, um, he had uh, his EEG the day that um, they left, or the day prior to, and I never got the results um, for the one that was here or the lab results because it did come back that he had a toxicity from the medication. Um, let me know if you, if you can't hear me, I talk low. <laughs> um, I went to get the results and they said that I wasn't able to do it. I had to inquire through CPS to get the results. Um, the only reason why I say that is because last video, since he hasn't been on it, his eyes are getting, uh, they're dilating frequently and getting dark, which is what happened the first time. Um, I just don't want them to bypass the reason they diagnosed him with the, um, the absence seizures because they weren't able to do full panel testing on him. So it's more like a trial and error still. Trying he to just something. Yeah, he really worried me the last time I saw him, though. Okay, lots of medical concerns uh, regarding Colton. Uh, Ms. Black, if you can get all the med medical records you have to Ms. Holland as soon as you can. I, yeah, I can, but the last, the past uh, two appointments that he had, uh, they won't release anything because it still says that they're in foster care. It has to go through them. I understand. I need you okay. to get the records you have to Miss Oh, Holland I have now? Yes, so that she can get those records to his current doctor. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yes, And then Miss Holland, I need you to communicate with the mother about everything going on with this little boy and his doctor. Every, and if it's possible to invite her to the appointments through FaceTime or anything like that, uh, let's do that so that she is kept up to speed on what's going on with Holden. Yes, ma'am. Uh, what about Grace? Uh, I, I know that you had said something about school, um, but the mother indicated at the adversary hearing that, that Grace had some issues at school with dyslexia and that sort of thing. Have we gotten her set up with some 504 modifications at school? She has not had a 504 meeting as of yet. Um, the Deanna hasn't set one up hasn't requested one yet. Um, she said that 
she had told me that he has an ARD, that Colton has an ARD, but not, she hasn't informed me about Grace having an ARD yet. Grace needs an ARD right away. Yes, ma'am. We will contact the school, Your Honor, and get all the ARDs set up and everything, <clears throat> as well as get with mom and go get these medical records of Colton's and then get with grandmother again to um, about the medications and things. We were trying to work on that. I know Chelsea's been working really hard with the insurance agency and everything. Um, but yeah, we will get all this done. Uh, Ms. Black, any additional concerns regarding the children? Um, I am a little worried. Uh, Landon doesn't uh, express himself very much, and Colton is his. Colton's how I find out when Landon's having a hard time. He basically like told me the last time that he's getting bullied pre pad. I just don't want him to lock up and end up having. We were just now getting through explosives anger and working on stuff and I just don't want him to backtrack and as far as Colton goes um I mean it it took us a while uh I'm still going figuring everything out but um I think my mom needs to have a little more patience and understanding because Colton it's uh not just his seizures it's you know the, di the diagnosing him with ADHD it's just a bypass to get him through other um, testing they wanted him into a sleep study that I denied two years ago um, because it was the, the chemically induced sleep study or something like that. Um, but it's more towards a cognitive behavioral something that they were looking at also. It's a neurological thing. So my mom just seemed kind of short. Great, Gracie and Landon, like they all work really well together and they help. You know, I just heard my mom kind of snap. My, I don't know what it was. It's just maybe I felt bad. And you could see on his face, he was confused because he's not, don't get me wrong. He's, he's a typical kid, but you could just see when it's like not registering. Does that make sense? But I mean, uh, have, we, have, have we done, we've done the CANS assessment, I'm, I'm assuming. Can, I think it might be appropriate to do psychologicals on the kids as well. Yes, I am. Yeah. I'm working and with the office worker. Oh, sorry. Sorry, um, I'm working with the LPS worker um, to get them scheduled with the Stephanie Leachman down south and um, get them in as soon as possible. Yvonne is working to get in, get them in with her for psychological and to get them in with individual counseling. Great. Okay, uh, do we have the home study back on the grandmother? Um, yes, ma'am. Um, I reached out to them today because I still hadn't received it, but um, they forwarded it to the investigator and the supervisor, which I was not on the email. But anyway, I do have it. I've looked at, I've scanned it, but I've looked at the um, back and there's not really many concerns. It's they lived in Florida in 2019, I believe. So we just need to request the criminal from them. But other than that, it, the home study looks good. Okay. We also <clears throat> talked about a home study on a man named Joe Benavides. Uh, did we get that one back? Um, we have that one back, but I was also informed that um, mom didn't want us, like we're withdrawing from that home study. So Lindsay, I believe, told Chelsea that um, we didn't need that home study. She wanted okay. her kids to stay with their mom. Okay. All right. Yeah. Tell me about Ms. Black's plan of service. What are we asking Ms. Black to do in this case? Um, I am asking Ms. Black to um, allow myself access to her residence on a monthly basis, maintain stable housing, stable employment, participate in supervised visitation with her children, participate in a psychological evaluation, follow all, all recommendations. Um, participate in WIN, follow all my recommendations, participate in therapy with Mr. Richard Gatlin, 12 hours of parenting classes, participate in a drug and alcohol assessment, in random drug screens as requested, and refrain from a criminal lifestyle. Ms. Murray? Your Honor, at this time, I don't have any objection to that plan of service. 
Okay, I will approve the plan of service for Ms. Black and tell me what Ms. Black is working on as far as services so far. Um, Ms. Black is doing amazing. She's actually going to her own NAAA self-improvement classes type things on the weekends. Um, she is working her tail to maintain stable housing, stable employment. Um, she is doing everything she can to participate in supervised visitation with her children. Um, she's meeting me halfway if she has to, like, if she's out of town, she lets me know. She tries to let me know ahead of time when she's going to be out of town on a job. So um, I need when I need to know for the next day for visitation. Um, so that I know where I need to pick her up. Visitation is always at St. Francis or where we can pick her up and take her somewhere for consistent Wi-Fi. I'm sorry, I'm really thirsty. Okay, Ms. Holland, tell me what, as far as the issues that Ms. Holland, that Ms. Black needs to address, mm -hmm. uh, the reasons we're here, what is she doing to, to address the issues in the case? Um, it's okay, Chelsea. Um, we are asking her to get in therapy with Richard Gatlin. We have that set up. We have the, or he's going to be what calling are we asking her, her to address in therapy. Her drug use and uh, domestic violence okay. issues from the investigation, of course. Um, and then we also need her to do a drug and alcohol assessment. I don't know if they've done that right yet or not, but and follow through with all recommendations, but mainly focus on her sobriety and um, being independent and getting a stable housing and job. Okay, Ms. Black, do you understand? Okay, all right, I will approve the plan of service for Ms. Black and tell me about the fathers. What, is, what are we asking the fathers to do in the case? Okay. Uh, for Andrew, we're asking, I, I believe he's still alleged, so we're asking for paternity on him. Um, and then for Christopher, we're still trying to locate him, but to participate in the services, maintain housing, employment, participate in visitation with his children, uh, complete a psychological evaluation, therapy, do a drug and alcohol test, uh, drug and alcohol assessment if he's to test positive and to complete some drug screens for us as we don't know any information about him right now. Okay, I will approve the plan of service for the dads as well. Okay. Okay, we'll have an initial permanency hearing in the case, August the 15th at two o'clock. Let me have the parties identified. Gary Mitchell with Lubbock County District Attorney's Office here on behalf of the uh, Texas Department of Family and Protective Services, also here from St. Francis Ministries, is caseworker Taylor McDonald and uh, supervisor Amber Weatherford. Parties are present, ready to proceed. I have Miss Nino here with me. Um, I, Matt, Matt Morrow is her attorney. I do not. I don't see him on. Right, he is not on. He is involved in a jury trial this week and couldn't be gotcha. here. Miss Morgerson is the attorney at Latum for the child. Um, Elena is placed with um, Tracy and Les Sanders. She's been there since December 15th in Snyder, Texas. Um, she'll be six months on the 20th of this month. She has her six month well checkup scheduled for April 26th. And then next month, she'll have her first dental appointment. She's um, up to date on her shots. She's healthy. She's uh, developmentally on track. She recognizes faces and voices. She's starting to roll over. She's an ECI and they're working on her starting to push up. Um, other than that, she's doing really good. She has visits once a week in Snyder with her mom and her siblings. And she's very bonded to them as well. Okay, the, is the placement of fictive kin? Yes, ma'am. And the home study is approved? Yes, ma'am. Okay, very good. Ms. Nino, do you have any concerns regarding Alina? No, ma'am. All right, very good. Um, tell me how Ms. Nino is doing in services. 
Um, for I'll just list them in until so stable income. She has a full time job. She's now a manager at her job. Um, and I verified the appointment with her. She has stable housing. She moved into her own apartment in March. She has a room set up for Elena. She has everything she needs for her. Um, she completed her parenting classes. She completed her OSAR and January 17th. Um, she has five sessions left for her substance abuse group. She now attends individual counseling twice a month instead of weekly. And she is still drug testing for us. Her um, past three UAs were negative. She took a hair strand for us and it came back today. It was positive for marijuana. It was a very low, it was a 0.6, um, but everything else, her drug tests have been looking really good. Okay, are there any services that Ms. Nino needs to be participating in right now that she is not? No, ma'am. She's just completing her, she's finishing her substance abuse group. Okay. Ms. Morgerson, do you have any concerns regarding Elena? No, I do not. Okay. It sounds like the mother is fully participating, uh, waiting on a clean hair strand, but we're close. Is that right, Ms. Nino? Yes, yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, what about Mr. Reyes? Is Mr. Reyes participating in services? Um, he was scheduled to have a paternity test done on March 28th, and he moved jails on March 27th. So I had to contact with, yes, I had to contact with the new jail information, and I'm not sure if he's been swabbed yet or not. I haven't heard back on that, but hopefully that got done. But he has sent me a parenting packet back and a um, relapse prevention plan. But that's all he's sent me so far. Okay, I'm going to appoint him an attorney at this point. So we know because we know where he is and he's participating in services. Yes, I think it would be important for him to have an attorney. So I will appoint him at, an attorney today. Let me know as soon as you know the results of that. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Anything else for Alina? Not at this time. All right. I'm going to set another permanency hearing and a final hearing August the 3rd at 9 a.m. Um, but certainly I would say maybe May, early June, if we do another hair strand and that comes back clean, it sounds like based on mom's other progress and the services, we need to be looking at placing back with her. Um, and certainly Miss Nino, if that's not happening fast enough for you, let Mr. Morrow know and he can request a hearing on that issue if he thinks you're ready. Hello. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? That is it. Thank you. Okay. We'll be adjourned. Thank you.